Okay, so now for a trickier part, which is drawing on a center line. So here I've got the billet that I just cut out um, and it follows the pattern pretty good. But now in order to make this, this, this cut on the next axis, so cut on the X axis, let's call it. Now we need to cut on the Y axis just to make our job of making the handle a lot easier. So in order to do that, in order to transfer that, the uh, dimensions of this profile onto this axis of the billet, we need to first start by finding our center line. And it's pretty simple to do. Typically what I do to make sure that the grain doesn't run out in the handle is I count the grains up. And on this handle, it's actually, it is so dead straight for such a long run of the length of the handle that you don't even actually have to count the grains up. All you need to do is mark center on one end and center on the other end and stay within the confines of how long it stays straight. So it bends just a little bit. It starts to pull off a little bit down here toward the knob. And so I know from basically about here to here, everything's pretty straight. So I'm going to actually just mark half half of the width here and half of the width there, and then I'm gonna use these rules to strike a line. And then based off of that line, we're gonna go out determined by the actual width of the, of the handle that I have here. So here we go, just to start here. You know, this is eight quarter ash, so it's two inches. So at the one inch mark, and let's see how accurate that is. It's pretty accurate, down to a 32nd or something like that. A little tick marks. And because I know it's straight for a lot of the run, I'm actually going to mark this thing in, you know, eight inch measurements or so. Just going as close to accurate as I can here. Because I actually prefer using this smaller rule to that flexible rule. So if I can get away with using this more, I will. It's easier to draw. So for the most part, this whole thing is very well centered. It's just, it only comes off down here toward the knob just because of how far off so we've got this center line right here. You see the center of that grain right there. It continues down. It continues down. And here, see this grain end right here is actually this one as well. So it kind of runs like that and then it runs off. The center of the grain runs off. So this front part of the knob is actually just a little bit farther away from the center of the grain, which is why if you look at it here, it kind of pulls off this way. Hard to see, I'm sure, on the camera, but suffice to say that's what's going on. And let me just make sure that I am close to accurate here. Checking all my lines. Yep, everybody is right on the money. So I'm gonna go from one to the other. Cause like I said, I prefer using this, this rule. It's just a little bit nicer to draw with. Mm -hmm. The width of the pencil. Down here is really where this rule helps a lot. It's when my things start to bend. Yeah, when you're drawing this on, you want a really nice flexible rule because you're going to go up the handle. 
There we go. It's not super important to track all the way up the knob, but I like at least having some center lines marked out. So I see the jump up there, and then now I'm actually going to use this for center line on the knob. Yep, looks good. Okay. So now I'm going to use this line to make our measurements uh, off of this original pattern here. I'm not really good at using these calipers, so I'm just going to kind of wing it based on whatever is easiest for me. So that's two. All right, and that's going to be for from that's going to be the width from here to here. So go above the line. Don't forget the width of your pencil. Make your mark, go below the line. Don't forget the width of your pencil. Make your mark. You're gonna do the same thing in those eight inch intervals again, whatever, close to them. Your mark for the end of it. Just so gonna jump in all of these. It's almost the width of the rule, which is kind of nice. Be nicer if it was. Remember, it ends right there, so I'm gonna make it that long. I'm gonna have to go past it. So there. I like that for center and then it flares out up here and typically I like to do a lot of that actual flaring just by hand with the draw knife so I'm going to take that measurement and I'm going to actually flare to that section so that happens right about here As you can see down here, matches up with that. So that's where the shoulder is. Sometimes it comes in a little bit more once you're done, but once you're working on it, I mean to say, but you can always fuss with it then. That's true. Now I'm embarrassed because I'm on the screen. Think about doing math in front of you all. It's 15. 
Where's the reload? <laughs> See, here I go. Hey, everyone at home, what's half a 38 and a half? It's 15 plus 4, 2, 5. So 15, 9, 19. Hope that's true. I'm pretty sure it's true. I'm just going to measure it again once I'm done. It's easy enough to do that. And if I'm close, I'll be happy. All right, so that should be. Yep, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna flare to those points. Flare to them. I know this is really harsh flare, but I'm gonna get rid of that once I start working with the drawing. I'm not afraid of that. And by harsh, I mean like the angle is an angle. Like we don't want that. We want it to be smooth transitions, but we'll fix that with the drawing. So there's that taper, um, tapered down, not by much, but we do. And you notice I'm, I'm making these measurements and I'm putting them on pretty much dead on with what those measurements are. When you run something through a bandsaw, if you cut right to the line, it's a lot easier to not have so much guesswork later on when you're using the draw knife, all you're doing is rounding the edges. So here we go, 15. Perfect. And that's just about here. Yep. I'll extend that out. And then put that on here. And then finish the flare here. That shoulder, like I said, is going to be worked on with the draw knife. I'm gonna get close to that, but I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna shy a little bit on this side of the curve. I mean, this side of the of the scrap mark, when I'm to that point. And then this slow taper here. Now, this is where you get into trouble because once this is tracking on the bandsaw as you're cutting this out, you see down here we've got this irregular shape. So when you're tracking this through the bandsaw. The knob comes up and down, kind of depending on where this handle is resting. You know, if, I, if I'm resting on this hard shoulder, then all of a sudden I drop off the edge of the bandsaw that raises this uh, knob here, which cuts into that. So what I do is I set a mark that I am going to shy away from and I'm going to stop cutting uh, with the bandsaw blade. And then I'm going to save all that roughness later for one, the draw knife, but really two, the Dremel with the sanding attachment. So you'll see, I, I just, I mean, at this stage down here, I can just wing it because I just know that I can't, I have to stop before this hard shoulder. I stop usually somewhere in here. So I'm going to just wing this one. It's, it, the symmetry doesn't matter as much when you do this as much as I do you kind of get a feel for the symmetry when you're actually working it. So I'm happy with that right there. I'm going to darken that line. And remember, we're just getting away from where it actually is going to be once I wind up hitting it with the Dremel with the sander attachment. 
So we just don't want to mess that up on the bandsaw. That is the area in which a bandsaw can really screw you up. Same with up here on this shoulder. So as I'm feeding this in, these angles are changing from resting on the on the platen of the bandsaw, the, the table of the bandsaw. And so it comes up and down and you get this, this angle is supposed to be pretty straight from here back and you're just gonna miss it. So that's I come around here, I get a little loosey goosey with it. I just wanna make sure I'm not hitting that shoulder. And the pattern that I use is different. You can kind of see the pattern is a little bit different in size um, compared to what it winds up being. And that's just because this is a pattern and I shape it down to fit the eye. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. Let's go over to the bandsaw and cut this out. Am I forgetting anything? Nope, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's, uh, let's head on over.